Bah. Welcome back to the White Time Channel. Today, 20 to a million. Bon Iver. No wheel. Mm -hmm. This is our discog deep dive. Not really. Bon Iver Essentials. Whatever we're calling <laughs> this. I don't know. Doing all the main albums. This is the third one. Yeah. Um, for Emma and the self-titled. I think you have been very big fans of both of those, to say the least. That is correct. I already own both of them on vinyl. And yes, uh, I love Bon Iver, Bon Iver, and... For, for Emma. And I think they're both classics. So I'm excited to love this one equally as much as I love the first two. Yes. Um, yeah, this is the first experimental album I think I've ever heard. Um, changed things in my brain about how music can sound. Okay. Uh, so this should be an interesting experience. I don't want to say too much about it. Obviously, this is 2016, so there's been a five-year disconnect between the two. Um and yeah, this is one of the biggest curves an artist has taken in a discography. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that. Okay, fair enough. But I think we could just jump in then. The opener, 22, over soon. Pause a little early here. Okay. 22 over soon. That was pretty G dang awesome. Um, I know we, we recently did the Emotion Heap. Uh, mm -hmm. I always forget what that album's called. <laughs> uh, something. That Emotion Heap record, the one that everyone it's knows. Fantastic. Uh, very good. But you mentioned when we did Hide and Seek that there are moments on some oh, Bon Iver yeah. records that remind you of that song. And I was getting a little hints of that, especially in the third verse as the mm -hmm. they kind of like layered the auto tune and then it was just kind of that synth or whatever that is going. Um, I was getting very, very much Emotion Heat vibes and I loved it. I thought that's a great opener. Um, not too weird yet. I, I'm kind of like, I know it's going to get there. I've heard the, yeah. I know it's reputation, yeah. but man, that's mm -hmm. a really good opener. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I haven't listened to this record in like a couple of years. And I think going through the discography, it's really clear when you get to this point, like there is a straight like line in the sand. Um, but I don't know. The, this whole thing is going to be very interesting. I don't know if you're going to get much from lyrics at all. It's going to be very much just like take in as it goes because the lyrics just go out the window. Like there's some beautiful lines in here, but if you try to find any kind of narrative or anything, it's going to be very difficult on the first listen. Um, this is, whole thing is kind of kaleidoscopic in a way. I love how it opens very electronic and you get those like organic hints and strumming and you get the vocals without all the processing coming in. There's just like these great rays of sunshine that pop in in this mix and it's it's a jumble of sounds, but it works really, really, really well. Hmm. I think this record is just all about feelings and just like that warm feeling of this coming in is just really great. So fantastic. Yeah. Big win. Track two is 10 Death Breast. Indeed it is. <laughs> Death 
The breasts. That was also pretty G dang good in a very different way. Um, you know, first one is very. Uh, I don't even. I don't know if beautiful is the right word, but I'll use it. It invites you in. It does invite <laughs> you in. It's yeah. very kind of accessible. Then immediately hits you with a grimy. It almost is like industrial, like mm-hmm. evil, um, which is pretty G dang cool. It's a really unique sound to it. Um, yeah, I can't imagine being a Bony Bear fan in, at, uh, <laughs> at this point, <laughs> like, was there any lead up to this at all? Like in the singles well, or EPs? I think there was some singles, so there was a little bit, but there was also, he worked with Kanye and a lot of hip hop producers and artists a lot, like during that string between the self-titled actually just blood bank threw on. So I think he had a, a range of influences going into this thing. That would make sense. That would make sense. And I was also kind of wondering, because I know you often credit Age of Ads as bringing the bleepity bloops to folk. Yeah. Uh, but this came out like before Age of Ads, right? No. Age of Ads was 2010. 2010? So this is after that. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. For there is reason. the classic, you know, <laughs> folk artist going electronic. Um, yeah. I think it happens all over the place. I think Mount Erie actually does it earlier than Sufjan. There's a lot of artists that kind of do this. Um, yep. But yeah. Well, I'll take it. I really like the sound of that. And I don't know if that's a surprise to some people, but I like it. So I think it makes sense when you listen to all the other Boney Bear records. I think out of context, this stuff is going to be very inaccessible, but it's it gives you the same feelings as every other Boney Bear record. It's just through a very uh, abstract, distorted lens. Um, and it works really well. I, I think Death Breasts is great when I play it throughout, like just in the album order. I don't listen to it on its own that often. Um, in concert, it went really hard. Like the just the incredibly like distorted drum line coming in and everything. Um, but yeah, it is very, very different than anything we've heard so far in the discography. <laughs> so it's fantastic though. Yes, I agree. Yes, sir. All right, one of the big ones. 715 Creeks. Down on the creek, I remember something. Heard the heron hooting. Search the breach that lies somewhere. Low moon down the yellow road. I remember something The hills is all a heaving in my mind The sun is evening and it's not even up a time Turn around, you're my A.G. Turn around now, you're my A.G. Goddamn, turn around now, you're my aging. 715 Greeks. Okay, there's the hide and seek song. <laughs> found it. Uh, found it. Yeah. No, I think that was really, really well done. Um, it is like, I think, honestly, what makes hide and seek so great is how long it is. And it really mm. takes uh, its time building over the course of like five minutes and there's different parts and all these, all of these different layers. This one's really, really short. So it doesn't quite hit the same, even though it's kind of doing the same thing technique wise where it's like, okay, just put a bunch of like layers on top of each other or all vocal layers. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So I don't know if that completely like hits that same itch, even though it's kind of trying to do the same thing, but I did really like it. It just doesn't feel like a full song. Maybe that's because it's only two minutes long. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think this one too is one that like grows and it's like kind of very significant in this record. I think when it's flows throughout all of it, it's like a perfect piece to be right here. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely takes off of that hide and seek model. Um, the song actually uses an instrument that was like created specifically for this. Um, oh. So it does it on the fly. It's there's no editing to it. This is just how it sounds when you go through that that vocoder because um, it just splits everything into melodies and harmonies like immediately. Um, so every time he does it live, it's different. Um, it's mm. is really really fantastic. I, it, it's such like emotional gut punch. His vocals are strained. They are loud. They're soft. You get the falsetto. You get the deep range. You get all of it in one most of the time. Um, I think just like, it's an incredibly satisfying thing to the ears and it does keep your attention when you just really like goes for it. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Alrighty. 33. God. Track four. Thirty-three God. That one was also very good. I can see why this one is the most streamed, even though it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> there aren't even like really any like standout ones in terms of like streams. Where like you see mm-hmm. like, uh, what's the one? Holocene has like hundreds of millions, and then all the other ones like this is a pretty even record, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty interesting. Where it's like if people are listening to it, they're probably listening to it all the way through. Yeah, um, which totally makes sense. Um, but I think that this kind of perfectly works in terms of like track pacing uh, and like the transition from like this weirdo cybernetic 715 Creeks into like some really nice pianos and vocal harmonies sounded like something off of like Bon Iver, Bon Iver, um, and then eventually building to somewhere weirdo and chaotic. I thought it was really, really well done. I really liked it. Yeah, I think the the transition from Creeks into God is one of my favorite things on the record. Just like it's so, so artificial and then boom, just piano, vocals, more traditional song. It works fantastic. The builds with the heavy drums, you got this Kanye kind of Yeezus style, like just pounding of instruments just coming in and you get these great crescendos. Um, The samples coming in is also really nice. It's just this floaty, kaleidoscopic, spacey, just like everything is abstracted, but you can see the emotion cut through every time and i think that's something that's very hard when you make music that is this cryptic it's it's hard for it to connect to people unless you have that through line that just cuts through otherwise it's just a jumble of noise and people are going to be turned off by it i think this record is still polarizing but there's songs like this where it's like you can't deny that like this is a bony bear song to the core oh yeah um but even just lyrics going into religion and i think just spirituality in general across this whole record um yeah i think people attach meanings to these songs and i think that's that's a really cool thing that you're able to do with these records so mm-hmm. yeah phenomenal all righty 29 strafford apartments track five <laughs> 
<laughs> Too many numbers. <laughs> Bradford Apartments. This is very interesting. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was weird, like that that last one almost sounded like the beginning of like a Bon Iver Bon Iver song and like this one mm -hmm. was taking it way back to Forema with like those finger pick guitars. And the only thing that differentiates it is all those weirdo vocalizations or whatever. Um mm -hmm. which I am a big fan of. I loved yeah. pretty much all of that. Um the kind of texture, the contrast between the you know, real acoustic guitar with these like vocalized vocals. Phenomenal. Creates a really interesting dynamic. And then when those vocals are dynamic, they just pack a whole lot of punch. And I think it's done very well. Very nice. Yeah. That, that is a masterpiece. That's, that's like, this is top five Bunny Bear song for me. Like it might be even like in the top three. Um, yeah. Incredible. This was like this has always been the standout on this record to me and i don't think it's any different now just the the text texturally it's just like a master class like you have his vocals which are just coming across so nice and you have the really deep low end matching his vocal there the the, the guitars the clipping in like the last chorus is beautiful um there's just like some like feeling attached to this song that you can't even put into words it's like fractured but so familiar and hazy and like kaleidoscopic and floaty all at the same time it's just an absolute beautiful track I, I don't know how you even make this this is like if i can make something half as good in my entire life i'll be happy because this is just like so so good on every level um yeah that's that's masterpiece mm -hmm. all righty he did the thing well track six is six 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 they never do Finally. that. I know. Six is hanging in the bed. Kind of shit to ignore. I cut the cord. Come up with your name 
Six six six. That one. Honestly, I might like that just as much as I like the Stratford apartment. <laughs> that one slaps. Um, I don't know like what to say about it because I feel like it's pretty g dang similar to Stratford Apartments and its kind of mm-hmm. approach. Um, I feel like all of the vocals in this have been kind of doing the same thing. Not a bad thing because I really like it. Um, but man, just a really, really nice vibe. As like I expected it to be back to like the death breast thing because you know 666 and a devil ah Ah. but but no it's like this really kind of relaxing sweet sounding song i mean the vocals Mm -hmm. or the lyrics don't make sense but i mean that you can say that about anything on this album yeah exactly (laughs) so i don't know it sounds nice maybe it's like this really sad and depressing song if you read into it but i like it yeah, I, I think a lot of people like to dig into this record as much as possible and try to decode every little meaning. I don't. To me, that's not the point of this record. I think the the feelings and everything get like attached really quickly, and you're able to form your own conclusions to every track, and that way it means something different to everybody. And I really like that aspect. But there are people that like to dig in, and more power to them. But I'm not doing that. That's not the way I enjoy this record. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this track. Uh, again. Yeah, kind of same setup as the last couple we've gotten where we're mixing that folk with more of these like texturally just electronic and weird stuff. I love the horns on this track and how like his low end matches the the low end of the saxophone at the like I, I can't tell if it's him or the saxophone at the mm. points. It's really cool. Um yeah, it, it's a fantastic track. I don't have too much to say about this one either, but like it, the pacing of the album it's perfect where it's at. So yeah. fantastic. Um I am considering doing Moonwater and Circle. I feel like they work best together. Okay. Thoughts? You're the expert. We'll do that. We'll okay. Do that. Okay. Well, then we'll do that. Shit, I don't 
Moonwater, and Circle. Uh, both of those are pretty good. I think that your judgment was correct. I think we did kind yep. of need... That's kind of like a Lisbon, Ohio, and a Beth Rest. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of need the first one to make the second one hit as hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, the first one is three minutes long. And honestly, I think I might actually prefer Moonwater over Eight Circle. Because, uh, man, that is just an ambiance and, and just a vibe to it that is kind of unmatched on this record. Um, Eight Circle, I liked quite a bit, but also it kind of felt like it was doing the Beth Rest thing again, where he's mm-hmm. like, okay, let's yeah. go back to like the kind of 80s ballad vibe that he got on Beth Rest. But honestly, I think he did it way better than <laughs> Beth Rest. I love that <laughs> song. Um, mm-hmm. So in, a, in an album that seems to be taking a lot of chances, it felt kind of weird to be going like, okay, I'm going to go back to like the same kind of vibe that I did on my last mm-hmm. album. And, and I really didn't notice a whole lot of differences. It was just like, let's kind of do it again. I'm like, well, that mm-hmm. kind of feels weird in an album, in an experimental album. I feel like you should be experimenting a little bit more. Um, but I did like it. It's just, you know, it's no Beth rest. Yeah. I, I think, um, it works perfectly where it's at in the album. And I, it's one that I like, I listen to a lot and I really like it, but it's one that I kind of glance over when I like, when I think of the best tracks on this record that for some reason does not come up. Um, but it is fantastic. I, I think the, the slow builds of the horns and everything just creates a really nice atmosphere and the build at the end is fantastic. Um, Moonwater is like one, when I first heard this, I'm like, what is this? Like, this is, <laughs> this is not music. <laughs> um, but it's fantastic. The, the ambiance of it is great. Um, I think the, the kind of math ahead math behind it kind of like puts everything into context a little bit more on this record of just like finding numbers and patterns and things instead of like everything was very place focused on the last two and now it's like seeing the bigger picture seeing the patterns in life and not just in nature but in like all these different things kind of coming together all these religious things he's been talking about um all that kind of culminating and then you have circle which seems like the release of all that tension and they, they play perfectly off of each other so yeah fantastic all righty 45, track nine. Well, I've been caught in fire. Well, I've been caught in fire. Caught in fire. Oh. Well, I've been caught in fire. I've been caught in fire. I've been caught in fire. Welcome to fire too. Gonna transition, but yeah, <laughs> forty five. <laughs> uh 45 i thought that was pretty good um interesting i got a lot of frank ocean in that like a lot of frank ocean Mm -hmm. especially in the second verse um felt like i don't even know what song of his to compare it to the only like the only thing i noticed is when he was saying fire it sounded just like when frank ocean says wildfire on the hit song Wildfire by John Mayer featuring Frank Ocean, which is just a Frank Ocean song on a John Mayer album. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. They're saying it in like the same way. They're like, fire. Mm-hmm. It's like that same in like intonation and like the same melody. I'm like, that's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird thing to draw from if he did draw from that. Um, but I guess Paradise Valley came out three years before this, but wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise me. I have no (laughs) idea why you would draw from that. But uh, it is very, uh, very, very good. Um, I liked the... I always love when he, like, goes into his baritone voice. 
He has mm-hmm. such a silky smooth baritone. Which he does. Is, which he hardly ever uses it, which I think is actually um, to the, the better of, of his albums because it makes it stand out a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. Not saying I don't like his falsetto. I like it too. But man, uh, yeah, that one was really, really good. Yeah, this is one of my favorites, uh, definitely. I think it's very underrated when it comes to just, like, what people talk about with this record. It, it kind of is built the same way as Creeks, except instead of putting that weird vocoder on his voice, he did it on the saxophone at parts, and it was just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, the the way he's using the saxophone in this track, like, the, this is how you be different with it. Like, he's using even just, like, breathing into the reed without playing a note, just using that as texture throughout it, and all these different things was fantastic. The banjo coming in to add more layers as we went on. Um, yeah, incredible song. I, he did an extended version of this live, and it was, like, one of the best things he did in that performance, just, like, oh. letting this draw out and just create this mood for, like, five or six minutes was phenomenal. Um, yeah, I always go back to this one a lot. And it does transition beautifully into the last track, Um which you'll hear on your own time, I suppose, when that, <laughs> when that happens. Um, but yeah, a uh, million. Last track. million i don't remember if you said this on video or if you said this just in passing that you said i wouldn't like this outro or maybe it would grow on me i don't know why you would say this because this is one of the best outros i've ever heard in my whole life (laughs) holy cow this is like restacks level um Mm -hmm. in my humble opinion at least off rip uh holy cow that um Wow, this is like the lyrics finally kind of yes. makes sense. <laughs> the first time on the album, of course, it's the last song. But man, man, that is that is like really, really good. I was kind of getting vibes of the hit Jackson Brown song, The Loadout, which is mm-hmm. a phenomenal song. Um, just it being kind of a slower piano ballad with just him and a piano. But then as the kind of vocal effects came in, I thought that it differentiated itself enough to be like, okay, that's clearly different. Um, and I thought that, I don't know. It was just beautiful. I don't really know what else to say about it. Phenomenal. Yeah. Masterpiece. Uh, one of the best when it comes to just closing albums. I don't know what it is with him, but he just <laughs> knows how to do it. I and he know. does it extremely well on the three records we've done so far. Yes. Um, yeah, it's incredible. I think just like going back to a piano ballad after we go through all these different like twists and turns on this record, going back to like, here's like, you know, it's been so long since for Emma and all of this like transformation just to go come back to like the same central message and everything is just like really beautiful. Um, I don't know, something about outros, he just, like, turns it on, and it, it just becomes one of the most beautiful things you will ever hear. Um, I don't think it reaches a level of stacks, but it's, like, also just, like, I put this with Beth Rest. I think they're both just, like, at this level that is still incredible. I think when it comes to, like, album closers, he is one of the best that ever does it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess we can talk about the record as a whole. Yeah. Um, I think to the surprise of everybody, this has the highest track and winning playlist 
um, as of any Bon Iver album. I think <laughs> I think I like this one the best, which I think is the weirdest thing. I was not expecting mm-hmm. that at all. I did the whole foreshadowing thing at the beginning where I'm like, I'm going to like this equally as much as I like the other ones. And I might like this more. I love the like glitchy electronic elements that came in. I feel like it created a really great texture throughout the entire thing. Um, and it's not nearly as inaccessible as I've heard people describe it. Mm-hmm. I don't, people need to listen to it again. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I think people don't go in order. I think you need to like sit with the other two records first before doing this. Oh. Otherwise it's not going to hit nearly as hard. I don't think. Who's starting with 20 to a million. People see an album that's highly rated and you're like, that's the one I want to listen to. <laughs> Man, y'all are cowards. You need to follow our example because we clearly yes. know music better than everyone else. Absolutely. Uh, I like music, but I like it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> but man, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, it's definitely going to take more listens, obviously going all the way through. Uh, a couple times it's going to help. And obviously we will update our thoughts on the retrospective, which will come out in a couple months probably because we just did one. Mm-hmm. Um, but off rip. That was phenomenal, awesome, maybe the best Bon Iver album, in my opinion. We'll see. Yeah, I think I'm justified in saying that I don't have a favorite Bon Iver album because it literally changes every time I listen to a different one. Yeah. Um, that being said, I think this one is my favorite, but it'll probably change if I listen to four of them again. <laughs> That's um, true. Yeah, I, I think I have the most history with this record. I was like glued to this thing for years. Um, it, it's it's definitely just a Bon Iver album, but it's hidden behind all these abstracted weirdness and everything it just connects even harder almost with his messaging because like even on the self-titled he started getting out there lyrically um where it was like very open to interpretation you were still very grounded when it came to instrumentals but then you get to this thing and it feels like this is his brain this is what how things function for him and it feels incredibly natural to make that transition i don't think it's ripping off any other artists going like folk to electronic or anything this feels incredibly natural for him um but yeah, it's an incredible record. Um, I'll, I don't know. We're going to have to listen to all these again. Uh, I, I kind of want to do a video after we do all four, just talking about the discography in general. Um, yeah, we could probably good. hit Blood Bank eventually too. Um, but I'd be interested to see, like, listening to all these again and just, like, seeing which one truly hits the hardest. I think it's mm. going to be this one. Um, I don't know. This thing just has, like, a hold on me that, that I don't know. It, it keeps me coming back. Um, yeah. And the, the record for this is also fantastic. You get all the symbols, you get a booklet, you get everything. So, all right, well, I'll have to keep an eye out. Yes, sir. Um, that'll do it. I Two got... years, we'll get the tenth anniversary one. So, <laughs> well, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Counting down. <laughs> <laughs> what is that going to add? Just live version? Is that what? Maybe live versions, is? different cover. I wonder yeah. if he's going to do it all white like he has the past two. I don't know. I, I guess probably. I don't know. I, I feel like that would be hard to do with this album cover, but it would. <laughs> <laughs> what do we'll I see. know? Um, but yeah, that's it for 22 million. Next week will be the new Porter Robinson album. I think it's called smile yeah. XD. So keep an eye out for that <laughs> one. I think that's what it's called, right? I think it's smile happy face, but I think there is a song that has XD in it. Okay. It's one of, it has, is it colon D then? Yeah, it's colon D. Okay. Whatever. It's a happy face. Um, I'm very excited for it. I think we're going to see if we can get Bab Jab on the horn for that one. Um, Mm -hmm. So very nice. And then after that, it's seven swans. So got back to back bangers. Probably. I mean, I haven't heard the Porter Robinson record, but I can't imagine it being bad, honestly. I say that now. Hopefully I'm correct. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, Uh, we have a podcast. If you're interested, we do all sorts of stuff there. It will continue to be monkey themed for the foreseeable future. Uh, At least the next five or so weeks. So that'll be good. So... That's it. I have nothing to add. Me neither. Bye.